so we are going to talk about role of human being in ensuring or sustaining harmony in the nature so namaste everyone once again so we have been discussing harmony at various levels and we talked about the harmony at the level of society in detail and in the previous talk we had shared how we can ensure the transition from the current state of the society to a human society today we are going to talk about harmony in the nature and also we'll look at the role of human being sustaining harmony in the nature so we have seen while discussing the content in the workshop that the nature is class classified in four orders one is the physical order then the bio order animal order and human order and we can also see that these orders are mutually fulfilling each other so in the nature there is mutual fulfillment if you look at the physical order and the bio order we can see how the interaction between the two orders is cyclic and in such a way that every unit is enriched so when we have trees the trees enrich the soil and the soil enriches the trees and plants so the waste matter from the trees and plants falls to the ground it enriches the top soil wherever we have trees it brings the water level up and thus we can see how the mutual fulfillment is taking place among the bio order and physical order so in the nature we can see very naturally that there is mutual fulfillment it means the units are related and they are fulfilling to each other when it comes to animal order there also we can see we can see how the animal order is also fulfilling to the bio order and the physical order so many animals which are herbivorous animals depend on the bio order for their food and their fecal matter goes to the physical order that is the soil and then the soil enriches the plants you can also observe a similar thing for the carnivorous animals and we can see how different units in the nature in these three orders are fulfilling each other isn't it this is something that we have elaborated upon in the workshop so i'll not be taking multiple examples here i think we are all aware of this we have been exploring this now when it comes to human order then we can see that these three orders are fulfilling us so we are able to fulfill the needs of the body using the physical order bio order and animal order so we can see that if you have to make a building we need material from the physical order for food we need units of bio order isn't it and when our physical power is less we do utilize the animal power so these three orders are fulfilling us in multiple ways isn't it we can observe the various needs of the body and we can see how they are being fulfilled the need for food the need for clothes the need for shelter the need for instruments how they are being fulfilled and these three orders are fulfilling us but when it comes to observe our fulfillment for the three orders then there is a question mark there because we are depleting the physical order we are depleting the bio order we are also depleting the animal order exploiting these orders so we can see how we have polluted the soil how we have uh use too much of metals and non metals from the earth how the resource depletion is taking place we have used too much of oil and reserves inside the earth crust how we have deforested isn't it the coverage of plants and trees has come down because of which we can see that there is so much of pollution so on one hand we are polluting on the other hand we are having less of trees which can work to purify the air and also we have been poaching animals we have been killing birds because of which we can see that many of the species of animals and birds are not to be seen today or their numbers have gone down a lot isn't it we can also watch in our neighborhood the various animals and birds that we could see 30 years back maybe most of them are not visible isn't it so our participation in these three orders is questionable so physical order bio order animal order are enriching for the human order but human order without right understanding is not fulfilling for any of the four orders isn't it we are not even fulfilling the human order we are fighting wars we are having so much of opposition we are struggling with each other we are not even fulfilling the human order 
what to talk about the other three orders. But we have natural acceptance to be mutually fulfilling, isn't it? We do accept naturally that yes, I have to fulfill these three orders. I also have to be fulfilling for my fellow human beings. Once human beings understand, they can be fulfilling for all the four orders. So only that we do not have the right understanding, but we do have the natural acceptance. And if we observe our journey, our process of self-exploration, so we have been referring to our natural acceptance and then trying to validate the same in our experience and then trying to ensure the right understanding. So you could have been able to observe that the more you are getting involved in this process of self-exploration, your participation is getting a qualitative shift, not only with human beings, but the rest of nature also. It might be the case that we have been consuming, we have been consuming more than what we require, but now our consumption is getting down, isn't it? We are able to see how much we need and we are also able to see how to fulfill our need. So we can see some qualitative change taking place in our living with uh, growing right understanding. And this is what we aspire for. <clears throat> to be able to ensure a happy and prosperous life and that too in continuity, we need to ensure the right understanding in completeness. Isn't it? Bhaiya, I do have a query, Bhaiya. Ji. Suppose when we are handling this session for our students, Bhaiya, can we say, since we are taking the resources from physical order, bio order and animal order, it is our duty to give back yeah, uh, like so, a commitment. Is it right? Or, or how is it different from natural acceptance to be mutually fulfilling by us? So just saying that something is my duty will not develop my competence. It would only be a compulsion for me. Mm -hmm. But when I'm able to see naturally that this is my natural acceptance. If I have to be happy, I have to go by it. Mm -hmm. Then only I can be fulfilling. Otherwise, it becomes a kind of uh, dictation on me, a kind of compulsion on me. Mm -hmm. Just saying that it is your duty to live happily with your neighbor does not make me fulfilling to my neighbor. But when I'm able to see that this is my natural acceptance, I naturally want to make my neighbor happy. Mm. And that will ensure happiness. If I do not work to make my neighbor happy, I will also be unhappy within. Then my conduct is going to be definite. Otherwise, it is going to be dependent on something outside. Some external motivation is going to dictate me. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Ji, ji. So it will be more fulfilling also. Yes. In fact, this is our natural acceptance. <clears throat> it's not mm -hmm. that just because we are taking from the nature, we have to give back to the nature. Mm -hmm. We are related to the nature very much. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Ji, Ji. Yes, Ji. Thank you. Thank you so much. Nice, Didi. So we can explore and verify this. <clears throat> whether we are fulfilling to the nature today and whether we want to fulfill the nature or not. There is so much talk of sustainability, isn't it? Circular economy, so many things. But uh, are we really fulfilling the rest of nature or not? It's something to be looked into. Now, when you go to study the nature, the four orders, so we can see that there is recognizing and fulfilling in the physical order. So one unit of physical order is recognizing and fulfilling the other unit of physical order. There is a relationship there and the units are fulfilling based on recognizing. Let's say we have to make a building. So we put one brick over the other. There's a definite relation between one brick and the other brick. If you put that brick in order of that relation, then it is going to make a building. But if you do not fulfill or if you do not go by that relationship between one brick and the other and then try to make a building, it may uh, fall down. Isn't it? So there's a particular relation between one brick and the other. And when we recognize it correctly, then we are able to make a building. Similarly, if you look at all these uh, physiochemical things that we are using, we are using the laptop, the mobile, you know, so many gadgets. So there's a definite relation between one atom and the other atom, one molecule and the other molecule, by virtue of which they are participating 
and then we are able to make instruments out of that. So in the physical order, we can see that there is recognizing and fulfilling. In the bio order also, we can see that there is activity of recognizing and fulfilling, isn't it? And added activity here is respiration, which is not to be seen in the physical order. So the plant has a definite relationship with the soil, with the water, with the air, and the plant is recognizing it and fulfilling it, by virtue of which there is growth in the plant, isn't it? When it comes to animal order, we can see that in the animal order, there are two distinct entities. One is the self and the body. Now, the self is not to be observed in the bio order. The self is only to be observed in the animal order or human order. Now, when there is a self here, then this activity is assuming here. Isn't it? The assuming is not there in the bio order. So, when it comes to define life, Okay, so essentially we are talking about the coexistence of self and body. So we are able to see that there is will to live in the animal order, but there is no such will to live in the bio order because there is no self here. There is no assuming here. Even if you look at the structure of a plant, you will see that there is no part of the plant which can coexist with the self and exchange information such as brain. Brain we can see here in the animal order which is a part of the body of the animal, which is able to interact with the self and exchange information. That part is not to be seen here in the bio order. So by our own observation and with some analysis, we can have this clarity that the bio order does not have the self, the animal order has the self. And in addition, we can also observe it directly. We can observe how the self coexists with the body. But for that, we start observing from the human order. So the presence of self is indicated by the activity of assuming. So if I ask you whether there is life in the bio order or not, whether plant has life or not, what will you say? You can respond in the chat box, whether plant has life or not, what do you say? Okay. Most of the responses coming in affirmation saying that plant has life. Okay, so I think we need to have a relook at this particular question because there are certain things in which I'm able to see that we still do not have the clarity. See, life is coexistence of self and body. And as I explained just now, there is no self in the plant. So how can the two coexist? So life and growth are two different things. In the plants, we do not see life. There is growth, isn't it? But there is no will to live. There is no coexistence of self and body. It can be observed in the animal order. <clears throat> so I think all those who have said that there is life in the plants may have a uh, somewhat deeper exploration. Yeah, so there is growth. Gita is saying, what is that? That is growth. So there is a physicochemical activity, and as I mentioned, that there is activity of recognizing and fulfilling. So the plant absorbs water, isn't it, and grows. The plant absorbs minerals and grows. The plant inhales and exhales air and grows. This is just a physicochemical activity. Now, why is that important to understand? Because now when we are going to talk about the fulfillment of the four orders in nature, and if these basic issues are not clear, Whatever follows now in the discussion will only become a sermon for you. Okay, we should be fulfilling the nature. We should be uh, harvesting water. We should be planting trees. We should be. Uh, we should not be poaching animals. We should not be killing birds. And this will all go into shouldn't shouldn't because the basics are not clear. So I think, uh, and this is something that I'm able to see. There are certain issues about which I can see that uh, clarity is still not there. So I request all our participants to take a deeper look at the proposals that are being shared here, either in the workshop, in the meetings, isn't it? Bhaiya, excuse me, Bhaiya. Ji. Bhaiya, we have learned that bio means life. All living things. So living things have life. So that is why I was with the assumption that plants, trees have life. Because bio means life, living. Okay, now again, when you say living, mm. isn't it? So you say that I am living, isn't it? Mm, mm, mm. 
है ना वॉट डज इट मीन दैट वेन यू से आई एम लिविंग और इसे आई वॉन्ट टू लिव आई वॉन्ट टू लिव हैपीली हु वॉन्ट्स टू लिव हैपीली but this is not we have been taught by in our school education bio means life all living things plants trees animals yeah, human beings that's what uh. that's what self exploration is meant for that we might have been conditioned wrongly mm -hmm. so who wants to live gita didi if you ask yourself who wants to live self wants to live self isn't it so ji bhaiya yeah even if the body is growing the body doesn't want to live Mm. the body mm. is having respiration the body is having digestion the body is having so many physiochemical activities but mm. does the body want to live definitely not definitely not so the body is a physiochemical entity there is no want there mm. there is no living there you mm. are coexisting with the body and you say that i want to live in the mm. animal also mm. we can see that there is a self and body and there is a will to live there in the animals the self wants to live so in the human order also we can see there is self and body in the animal order we can see that there is self and body isn't it mm. so i think so many responses which came in affirmation saying that plants have life need to deeply uh, take a serious look i'll say at this proposition and then try to uh, analyze and investigate because certain things might remain unclear i can see that there are certain issues about which we do not have clarity with a lot of uh, investment of time also because we might have been overlooking certain things you know there are certain such issues like we are not able to distinguish between natural acceptance and acceptance we are not able to distinguish between life and growth we are not able to distinguish between competence and potential many times when we ask in the workshop does every child have the same potential almost 90% responses come as no every child has a different potential so looking into these words like natural acceptance life potential competence growth is quite essential amol ji is saying there are many mechanisms of defense for survival and reproduction fine so now what does survival mean again so there is some recognizing and fulfilling which is sophisticated so the issue of survival is not there Uh, with the uh, physical order we can see now again when you say survival so what does survival mean so if it is something to do with the coexistence of self and body right then it is one meaning given to survival but if it is something related to the growth or just sustenance of that entity then it has a different meaning similarly so this is was one clarity this is one point i want you to have some clarity about and again we can also observe where do we place insects where do we place uh, worms germs all these things do we place them in the animal order or bio order so there is one clarity required regarding life and there is another issue which has to be clarified so when it comes to observing the entities in the nature where do we keep like mosquitoes insects worms what do you see where do you place mosquitoes insects worms amoeba bacteria viruses where do you place bio order animal order where do you place physical order you can spot in the chat box bio order yes there is no self there you can see there is no will to live there and we can see how there is a cyclicality there it goes back to the soil and then comes that is goes back to the physical order and then again germinates and becomes a unit of the bio order so this kind of clarity would be required because when we talk about the fulfillment this is something which have which has to be clear and you can see that if i am not able to distinguish between bio order and animal order how do i decide my food so when i am taking food by separating the self and the body in the animal order this is exploitation isn't it but when i am taking food from the bio order there is no such exploitation when i am taking food from the physical order there is no such exploitation yeah if i try to take something from bio order but do not replenish the uh, particular variety of 
plant that we are consuming, then it may become an issue because the cyclicality gets disturbed in the nature. That is another issue. So try to observe such things, isn't it? Even we can't decide our food correctly. And if you say that plant has life and you are consuming plant, right? And then you are consuming animals also, saying that when plant has life and I can consume, why can't I consume animals like that? So we'll see that with a long history of mankind, we have not been able to even decide what can be termed as food and when cannot be termed as food. Isn't it? And our conduct remains indefinite. So this is quite important to observe. Yeah, so Mamal Bhaiya is saying, yeah, so <laughs> yes, we are consuming non-living food because if you are consuming something from the bio order, that is fine, isn't it? So try to observe these particular issues. Basically, our uh, focus is on discussing something else. So I could take some more questions, maybe in the morning session when we discuss the four orders in nature tomorrow and onwards, then we can bring up all those questions that we might have. Now we can see that in the human order, there is activity assuming, recognizing and fulfilling, and there is also possibility for knowing. This is what we have joined together in this meeting because we want to know, we want to understand. Now we are trying to know what a bio order unit is, what a animal order unit is, how they are different, how they are similar, and how am I different from these three orders and similar to these three orders. So this is all that we are trying to know, and this is the process of self-exploration. Now, if I do not understand the human order, then there is some wrong evaluation taking place of the other three orders. We tend to over-evaluate, under-evaluate, or otherwise evaluate the other three orders. Okay, there is one question here in the chat box by Chandra ji, that if human being depends only on plant, they are saying shortage of food. Could you please explain? Yeah, so not like that. See, if I am depending on the plants for food and I am also growing plants, then where is shortage there? I am replenishing the soil. <clears throat> I am harvesting water so that there is no dearth of water in the land. I am cultivating and I am consuming a part of it and then uh, giving back to the nature. So there is no dearth of food there. In fact, let me mention one experiment. There is one scientist in uh, Japan who is no more there. He died three to four years back by the name Fukuoka. And he had developed a farming practice called do nothing farming. He has written a book also called One Straw Revolution. So he says that from the farm, I only take what I require and put everything else back to the farm in the soil. And just do not allow the soil to get contaminated because of some external uh, uh, elements by putting some urea or insecticide or pesticide. And he says that the soil keeps on giving back to me. And the crop production in that particular patch of land is much more than what you can get from other patches of land. So this is something quite to be observed. And when we are cultivating, when we are growing plants, then we are not depleting the soil. We are not depleting the uh, nature. Rather, we are using our imagination to replenish the nature in a better way. So keep on observing such things. These are very basic issues. And unless we are able to see our role in this particular way, and when, unless we are able to see the difference between these three orders, but with quite clarity, we will not be able to see our role also in terms of fulfilling the nature. In the medical science also, we do not have understanding of the self. And that's how we are not very clear about the difference between the plants, trees, or animals, birds, isn't it? So observe it. This is something to explore and why. A very particular issue. Uh, you'll see that this is something that we might have been discussing even in the environmental science courses. But there we do not talk about the self and that's how it becomes a kind of sermon. So we have been teaching the courses on environmental science to the student, but the student is not able to get this kind of clarity and does not able to make out one's role with the nature. At the most, there, should, there could be some motivation temporarily to fulfill the nature. But with right understanding only, I can see innately that this is my role. If I do anything otherwise, I'm not going to ensure harmony within me. This is something very important to observe for my own happiness and prosperity. 
Now, if you look at the present day problems, and you can see how we do not have the clarity at the moment, and that's how we are not having harmony with human beings. We are not able to ensure harmony with the rest of nature also. And we have caused so many problems in the nature. One rampant problem is climate change. Uh, one vice president of America, Al Gore, had made a video called An Incarnate Truth. There's a website also by that name, Incarnate Truth. And you can get some statistics there. The video has been removed from YouTube. It was there earlier on the YouTube, but now it has become a kind of paid video. So we can observe some data there. So the climate change is causing rising rapid increase you know, in temperatures, rising sea levels, melting glaciers, and there are changes in rainfall and weather patterns also. We can also see how the weather pattern is changing, isn't it? Just two days back, uh, in the month of May only, it felt like having cold. In fact, uh, so we can see how the weather is changing nowadays. Okay, the sea level is rising. This is a very important issue. If the sea level goes up, then the coastal areas are going to be drowned. And if the coastal areas get drowned, even if you look at the Indian Peninsula region, you can just imagine where will the people of uh, coastal areas go and reside. So they will have to move to the plains and plateaus, and there would be then again struggle and fight for survival among the human beings, isn't it? So we have to be really cautious about this. The glaciers are melting at the Antarctic and the Arctic zones. Glaciers are melting. The ocean and sea level is rising. Okay. There is a loss of biodiversity also due to intensive agriculture because we are using so much of chemical insecticide, pesticide, urea. Isn't it? There is unsustainable fishing. People are going deep into the sea waters for fishing. And the fish culture and the sea culture is getting disturbed. There is poaching of wildlife. People are going to kill animals. People are killing animals for entertainment. In fact, this was quite rampant about 100 years back. And then the governments became aware. And now it has been made illegal. But still, you can see that there is smuggling of animal tusks, uh, this elephant tusk and other things in the society. So people are still killing animals for either business or entertainment. We have degraded their natural habitat because of the animals and the birds have to move to sometimes the residential areas of human beings. We have destroyed their natural habitat. In Lucknow, just a few months back, one leopard entered the society and uh, it killed so many dogs and also wounded so many human beings. So we are destroying their natural habitat and we are not providing them proper habitat. The rain has become acidic to some extent. And the climate change is leading to extinction of species of plants, insects, birds, and animals. So these all have a very important role to play. Let me mention that in China, uh, during the 1950s, uh, the government decided that we'll have one revolution every year. So if there is steel revolution, the whole population will go to produce steel. So if there is agricultural revolution, the whole population will go to work in the farms. This kind of movement was started. The production grew also, but there are some wrong decisions taken. So the government said that these insects and birds are destroying our plants and our crops. So why not give some reward to people who kill these birds and insects? So an announcement was made that just kill the animals and uh, kill the birds and insects. Come to us and we'll give you some money in return. And you can see images are there, videos are there. People are standing in long queues to submit the uh, dead animal, dead birds and insects to get some monetary reward. And just after two years, there was a huge, uh, this thing, uh, uh, what is that called? Uh, Akal, you know? So people died of hunger because you know, this uh, crisis came in the society. And this is something which we can observe. So there are dearth of food, people died of hunger, and crore, at least one crore people died during that uh, period. So this kind of destruction we have been doing to the birds, insects, animals. Yeah, famine, yes. So there was a huge famine there. 
thank you palmiri we can also see that we have polluted the water air soil even plastic air pollution is causing some 7 million deaths every year this is more than the death that we could see due to this pandemic covid 19 this is the data by who we have this plastic pollution okay. in the area where i reside noida so just nearby there is a place called gaziabad and there, there is a huge mound of plastic you know, which is a uh, waste and now the government uh, is looking for some other site so that they can dump the plastic and other waste material there and then the colonies are coming with yeah colonies are coming with uh, complaints that please don't make this mound here in, near our colony because we are going to have some diseases the air is going to be polluted we will have a foul smell all the time but this is the state we are producing so much of waste today isn't it and it is causing problem back to us then yeah one message has come now so basically if you look at the insects and birds they help in cross pollination so they help grow production if you kill the insects and birds your crop production is going to go down there is another research which says that if you kill all the insects and birds someday isn't it within three months the whole whole human population will die of hunger <clears throat> because we'll have no food they have such an important role to play then we have the problem of drought and water scarcity due to the increasing population wrong food habits okay as you are mentioning so when you try to get food from animals so there is a huge amount of water and energy required to process the food then we have shifting weather patterns because of which again the crop production is going down we are having, having rains at the time of harvesting now if the rain comes at the time of harvesting the whole crop is going to get wasted isn't it resource depletion we can see with growing world population of fossil fuels minerals coal etc now it is also being questioned that after some time how will you get electricity and we can see how our co corporate world is operating huge buildings totally air conditioned you know made up of glass on the uh, walls and all the 24 hours they are running air conditioners now from where we are going to get so much of energy ultimately we'll have to shift to some nuclear power sources and other things which are again not sustainable we have dearth of fossil fuels and the good thing is that we are shifting to now electric vehicles but here again if you do not cut down our consumption if we do not try to use public transport then the lithium and other resources which we are going to use for the batteries or vehicles is also again going to be uh, depleted isn't it deforestation is causing soil erosion which can lead to devastating landslides and other natural disasters world's forests are disappearing at a rate of about 10 million hectares per year according to the united nations food and agriculture agency the source of this information is written on the bottom side you can see so this is a very serious issue isn't it we have to really be careful we have to really ponder upon it and look for solution if any question is there so far based on the content that i shared you may please raise your hand and ask are you able to see that this kind of menace this kind of problem is there uh, namaste sir namaste to all Ji, namaste uh, sir particularly the uh, particularly the plastic uh, pollution uh, actually i did my uh, research in the polymer nano composite and uh, later uh, i stopped to do the work on the particular field because uh, what I did the research work there uh, we have to uh, think about to prepare that uh, composite which is the uh, water-based polymer we use but uh, still uh, to continue my work I always have a thought whether it is uh, good to do the work uh, like a research work in the same field or not because uh, uh, we understood that uh, I understood that uh, the plastic is the one of the uh, the material uh, it polluted that uh, whole uh, nature and uh, because of the different qualities of the plastic we are used for the different application even though we are not mix it and make any uh, recyclable product uh, that is the issue and uh, nowadays uh, whenever we see that even for a small uh, town like a taluk level if you go just uh, 
uh, outside outskirts of the taluk level uh, taluk uh, places we can see that uh, huge uh, uh, the plastic they are throw uh, road sides so uh, always we are think about that uh, how we can reduce that but the problem uh, as a chemistry person uh, when i am discussing about that waste management and all uh, i we are suggesting that how to manage that waste uh, with our uh, uh, scientific knowledge and the technical knowledge but uh, uh, as a teacher uh, i can say that uh, like that only thing when we are uh, reduce or cut down our uh, uh, grids that is a the physical facility what I, what we are discussing in uhp uh, then only it is possible to uh, sort out that problem otherwise we are saying that a can be solved by the b b can yeah, be solved fine, by the i got your point i got your point yeah, yeah. so let me ask mm -hmm. one question here how many of us carry a linen mm -hmm. bag in our bags whenever we go out how many mm -hmm. of us carry a bag made of cloth with us whenever we go out maybe going to the college going to the market do we carry some mm -hmm. bag like this or not with us we can respond the chat box yeah sir yeah nice nice didi ah uh, yeah thank you dr arvind okay by mistake the hand was didn't okay fine just try to look into this whenever you go out do we carry a bag with us a bag of cloth that's a good sign so we can see that the quantity of units in each order is as per the overall enrichment of the whole and availability of sustaining sustaining resources so the most abundant is the physical order now we can see that there are planets on which you do not have plants animals or human beings but still the physical order is there the whole earth crust if you see it is physical order on the top also we can see the physical order so much of abundance of physical order and we can see uh, plants are there but not completely covering the uh, top part of the earth even the earth surface and then we have even animals less than the plants and humans are still less so to fulfill our needs we are dependent on all the three orders we are dependent on the animal order bio order and physical order and dependence of each order is on all the previous orders survival of human order is dependent on all the three orders this is something that we can see now if you just try to observe this sincerely you can see that our survival our being as a human being is dependent on all these three orders and if you are depleting them destroying them isn't it our survival is going to be at risk then it just like a person sitting on some branch of tree and cutting the same branch and then we are saying that i also want to stop cutting that branch of tree but let the let my friend first stop let my neighbor first stop then only i will stop uh, cutting this branch of tree but it's quite visible the way we are uh, creating problems for our own survival so a common misconception the preconditioning that i am the master of nature and the nature is for exploitation so for the sake of sensual pleasure or to fulfill our preconditioning we are trying to master over the nature we are trying to exploit the nature and this is something wrong with our imagination only the problem is here in our imagination it is not outside isn't it if the problem gets resolved here if you have the completeness of right understanding here then this kind of issue is not going to be there So already we have the natural acceptance for mutual fulfillment, but that our competence is lacking. So sometimes we are fulfilling the nature, but mostly exploiting, mostly depleting, isn't it? And this has become a kind of global issue. Every year we have meetings to discuss this issue, but since our consumption pattern is not going down, so we take make some mathematical formulation. We do some bargaining. so oh, there is a concept of carbon trading so if you are polluting the nature to this extent then you have to replete the nature to that extent that kind of uh, contract is also there but somehow unless we are able to see our relationship with the rest of nature all those things only remain at the level of thought and are not able to be a part of our living so that's a serious concern we have inherently natural acceptance to know to be in harmony isn't it 
so if the self is operating on assuming without knowing like the source of indefiniteness source of problem but if we are able to ensure knowing by understanding harmony then we are able to fulfill these three orders much much more but for that we need proper education sanskar the right and humane education sanskar which we are working for and we can see that we all are faculty teachers in this process and we have to reflect on our living we have to see how fulfilling we are to the rest of nature isn't it are we trying to nurture are we trying to enrich the animal order if yes then in what manner are we trying to enrich the plants and trees if yes then in what manner are we trying to even preserve the physical order if yes then in what manner so try to observe these things now we'll go further to study all the four orders in detail because that will give us an idea how we can be fulfilling to the four orders so you can see that in every order we have unit size so in physical order we have soil metal non metal such units in bio order we have plants and trees in animal order we have the animals and birds and in human order we have human beings if you look at the activity there is activity of formation and deformation in the physical order now in the bio order there is an added activity of respiration so this is something that we had discussed in the which we two workshop if i start detailing upon each of these words then it may take some more time and our focus is somewhere else so uh, i hope you are clear of these words if anyone is not clear about the meaning of these words please raise your hand or mess in the chat box i will clarify now formation deformation means that two units combine to make a larger unit or a larger unit disintegrates into smaller units so that is deformation you put brick over brick and you make a building that is formation and you bring a bulldozer and make the building fall and that is that is deformation isn't it we can observe that the formation deformation in the trees and also respiration so the tree was a seed from the seed it came to a sapling state and then it became a plant and then became a tree so there is formation taking place here and respiration is also going on after some time when the respiration stops in the tree then the tree goes back to the soil after some time a similar observation can be made about the body of animals even in our body we can see a similar thing our body uh, started at some state and now after some time to go back to the soil isn't it but presently we can see that this formation deformation in our body and there is respiration in our body now when you look at the animals in the self you can see that this activity of selecting and testing so primary activity if you see the development up to the stage up to which the development has taken place in the self of the animal is up to selecting and testing but within us we can see that we are having the activity of imaging analyzing comparing selecting and testing also so we try to image a happy and prosperous life we try to image a bright future we try to image a harmonious family we try to image a fruitful life isn't it and try to then analyze and compare various options and then select and test so our imagination is much more developed than an animal and we also have the potential for understanding and this is something that we are utilizing in this session also we are trying to understand the rest of nature further we can see the innateness part so we can see that the innateness of physical order is existence every unit of the physical order continues to exist so the existence is there but since there is formation deformation the constitution keeps on changing so that's why we are not calling it as a continuous unit but the existence is very much there in the bio order we can see that the existence as well as growth so we can see that the Uh, units in the plants and trees which make that plant or tree are very much existing whether they are a part of the soil or they are part of the plant they are very much existing and so long as the units are there as a part of the plant and the respiration is going on there is growth isn't it a similar observation can be made about the body of animals and the body of human beings now something that we were discussing earlier in the animal we can see that will to live in the self the animal wants to live who wants to live the self wants to live this will to live is not there in the plants in fact some experiments have been conducted suggesting that when you go to cut a plant or a tree 
you get some inform some kind of signal from there but that is only physiochemical if you play music by the tree the growth would be of one kind if you play a coarse sound by the tree the growth would be of some other kind so there is will to live in the self in us you can see that there is not only will to live there is a will to live with continuous happiness isn't it so there is will to live with continuous happiness yeah archana ji is saying so animals have the imagination till the level of expectation largely yes yeah so innateness is the self organization being in a definite order and we can see how every unit in these orders is there as a definite unit in a definite order next we can study the inheritance inheritance is how conduct is decided and maintained generation after generation so in the physical order the conduct is based on constitution the way it is constituted the conduct is decided so hydrogen has one kind of constitution and it burns with a pop sound oxygen has another kind of constitution and it helps in combustion but the water has some other kind of constitution and extinguishes the fire so based on the constitution we have different conduct taking place there isn't it in the bio order we can see that the conduct is seed based based on the seed the conduct is decided a neem seed will grow into a neem tree and will have one kind of property and if you look at a papaya seed the papaya seed will grow into papaya tree and will have another kind of property so the conduct is decided by the seed ha uh, bhaiya ji namaste namaste bhaiya ji in the animal and bird order unit in the intentness you are saying that they are willing to live but for the human being there is continuous happiness so my question is this for animal and bird there is no pain no sorrow no happiness they just want to live yeah so if you look at it the primary part is the will to live the way we look we try to ensure happiness that effort is not to be seen so if the development is somewhat more particularly for the animals which live in groups or in families or the animals which live with human beings that development starts taking place so we can see that uh, some feeling part is also to be observed particularly with the pets but again here you will see that their concern is primarily to survive to help the body continue but for us we can see that our primary concern is not for helping the body continue because we can see that there is a difference in the conduct of a uh, animal and a human being if somebody throws food in front of us and asks us to eat will not accept it isn't it and that's why we are going for education we are going for so many uh, activities we are doing so many we are making so much of effort to have a respectable life but for the animals you can see that even if you throw food in front of the animal it will simply consume mostly so primarily they are they is will to live here the primary part is the will to live with continuous happiness for which you are making so much of effort yes very is clear it means whatever whatever the human um, animal do they just do for the their body means if like a leopard sorry uh, uh, they are living in the in the in the family so they are fulfilling their uh, they are just taking care of the body of their relatives of their child like this but yeah. there there is no self growth in the self like this yeah so there is nothing like making a career for the baby leopard isn't it you can see that the lion kills the deer and then the very next day the deer are again moving around the lion they do not have a feeling of taking revenge killing the lions so that they don't eat them the next day that kind of thing is not there but we can see for us if somebody even destroy your family or does something wrong for the family you might carry a feeling of revenge in it for anybody who does like this so that imagination is much more developed in our case okay so th their feeling is just about to how to fulfill the body requirement that's it yes yes but we can discuss in more detail in the morning session because we are going to open up this chart in the morning session also
जी भाई व्हाट एवर क्वेश्चंस आर देयर वी कैन डिस्कस इन डिटेल जी भाई थैंक थैंक यू भाई नाइस भैया नाउ फॉर एनिमल्स वी कैन सी दैट द कंडक्ट इज ब्रीड बेस्ड सो लार्जली देयर आर टू काइंड्स ऑफ ब्रीड्स वन इज द क्रूएल ब्रीड एंड द अदर इज नॉन क्रूएल एंड द कंडक्ट इज डिसाइडेड बाय द कंस्टिट्यूशन ऑफ द बॉडी so you can see the cruel animals will have one kind of body they will have long nails claws okay the canine teeth would be there then the spine would be short so the cruel animals will have one kind of uh, structure of the body the non cruel animals will have another kind of structure okay so depending on the structure of the body the conduct is decided because that makes the breed now one thing to be understood here is that if the same cell goes to a non cruel breed it will behave like a non cruel animal and if the cell goes to a cruel breed it will behave like a cruel animal so the conduct is decided by the body by the breed now with human beings you can see that the body is not uh, the primary factor the more dominant factor is the self and whatever conditionings we carry within that decides our conduct so our conduct is decided by the education and sanskar and when we are able to ensure human education sanskar it ensures human conduct so by virtue of human education sanskar we can we can ensure right understanding and right feeling in the self of the human being so that there is continuity of happiness in the self and there is a tradition generation after generation to live with happiness and prosperity in continuity and this is what we are working for we can also see that our conduct is not decided by the body it is decided by the conditioning within the imagination in the self that is not the case with the animal so the imagination is much less developed in the case of animal ponder over it give a thought to this explore and verify now when you look at the participation of human being in the entire nature so you can see that our role is to preserve the nature and preservation means to enrich the nature protect the nature and rightly utilize the nature by virtue of which we are able to ensure prosperity for us we are able to fulfill the needs of the body so that is mutual fulfillment on one hand i am fulfilling the needs of my body on the other hand i am preserving the nature and the two go hand in hand if i deplete the nature destroy the nature pollute the nature then my own uh, bodily needs okay are not going to be fulfilled if you have pollution as we saw in the data also we will have respiratory problems if we contaminate the food by insecticides and pesticide we will have multiple diseases in fact there is a train that goes from punjab to rajasthan from bhatinda to uh, bikaner and that train is called as cancer train because there is so much of uh, occurrence of patients uh, with uh, cancer in punjab because of the insecticide use of insecticide and pesticide that we have made in cultivation and Uh, agriculture there that many people are having the problem of cancer disease of cancer and they have to go for treatment to rajasthan and the whole train is called as cancer train in fact the government has given a provision that in this train those who are having uh, this disease of cancer the cancer patients will not be charged the fare and one person can also escort them so that train has been named as a cancer train but this is the state in which we are living isn't it for more and more production we have polluted the soil so how to uh, fulfill the nature so we can protect the innateness of the nature the various orders we can protect and enrich the inheritance and we can make right utilization of nature in line with the activity this is how we can fulfill the nature and if you are not doing that at least do not violate it this is something that we can take up as a responsibility so how to protect the innateness this is something that we can explore how to protect and enrich the inheritance and how to make right utilization of the activity in the nature now going by that we can see that to understand the inherent harmony in nature and to live accordingly that would mean that we need to facilitate a conducive environment for the activity or at least not violate it of all the orders we need to facilitate the innateness or at least not violate it of all the orders and we also have to facilitate the inheritance or at least not violate it of all the orders so when you look at the physical order 
we can facilitate its existence by ensuring conducive environment and maintaining or ensuring the constitution for the constitution of earth if you keep on taking out oil gas and you know, minerals coal from the crust of the earth then ultimately the constitution is going to be disturbed and there would be global warming the temperature would go up ozone layer would get depleted and so many issues might arise similarly with the bio order we have to facilitate the growth by ensuring conducive atmosphere conducive environment and maintaining or ensuring its seed so there have been so many varieties of seed of plants but they are getting depleted it is said that in chatisgarh about 100 years back there is with 12000 varieties of paddy in a single state in the chatisgarh area there used to be 12000 varieties of paddy it is called a bowl of you know dhan ka katora bowl of paddy but presently if you see there are not more than 100 varieties of uh, rice so how to preserve the seed this is an important responsibility for us similarly with the animal we have to facilitate care of the body by ensuring physical facility environment for existence and growth of the body and to ensure its will to live if you are poaching the animals you are killing the animals for food isn't it or you are uh, using them more than what their physical strength is then ultimately they are going to suffer their breed is going to be destroyed there is uh, a video called heads and tails you should try to look at that video you see how we are um, treating the animals with so much of cruelty for the sake of food it is said that the amount of grain that india and china consume more than that is fed to the pigs in us and then the pigs are consumed and if you feed 13 kg of grain to the pig the amount of flesh that you get is 1 kg but if that food is directly given the grains are directly fed to human beings so you can see what a vast population can survive isn't it there will no dearth of food but we are doing so much of processing of food we are doing so much of misuse of food that on one hand we are dying of hunger on the other hand we are killing so many animals and treating them so cruelly is something to ponder upon with the human order we can facilitate care of the body by ensuring physical facility environment for existence and growth of the body and facilitate the will to live with continuous happiness by ensuring human education sanskar particularly by developing the right understanding right feeling isn't it so that one is able to participate in undivided society and universal human order and this is what we are working for you know, in terms of human education so very nice that we are in this process voluntarily sometimes it comes as a surprise to many people who are making policies or running institution how can such a huge amount of work can be done voluntarily but i really appreciate the way all of us have been coming forward to ensure human education sanskar in the society voluntarily i hope you are able to see this our role our participation with the rest of nature if anything is not clear from this slide do let me know i can explain it further now what will be the natural characteristic with this understanding so when we have the right understanding we will have human conduct we are able to live with human consciousness but when we do not have the right understanding we live with animal consciousness now animal living with animal consciousness is fine human living with human consciousness is fine but human living with animal consciousness is not fine and what we observe here if a human being is living with animal consciousness then there will be three traits here one is the wretchedness then cunningness and then cruelty wretchedness mean i am behaving like a wretched fellow oh i cannot fulfill my own needs okay i cannot be prosperous i cannot be happy i am helpless i have no way out this is being a wretched person isn't it so i am depending on something outside for my happiness for my prosperity this is being wretched now in this state of wretchedness one may resort to beguiling the other playing tricks tricking the other being cunning to the other so this is cunningness and the other option could be that if i am not able to see that i can fulfill my own needs then i resort to forcefulness violence cruelty now this is something fine with the animals a tiger kills, kills a deer oh sorry <coughs> a tiger uh, kills a deer with cruelty 
and uh, the deer again is comfortable the next day you know uh, roaming in the same patch of grass but if somebody does cruelty to us it is not acceptable but we might be doing cruelty to so many people directly or indirectly so this is something to be really cautious about and these these are some traits some you know uh, certain things which can be observed in the conduct of a person who is living with animal consciousness and you will appreciate that we all start from here only so if you do not have the confidence that i can live with happiness if we do not have the confidence that we can live with happiness we feel wretched and then we may resort to cunningness or cruelty otherwise we live with fear isn't it now when i am having the right understanding within then i persevere every time because i can see that happiness is to live in harmony so every time i have my commitment to ensure harmony within and in my interaction without any perturbation now when i am able to see perseverance within then i also help the other develop right understanding and right feeling that commitment is there within me that is bravery or bravery now with that commitment i can see that i have the readiness to invest myself my body and the physical facility to help the other develop right understanding right feeling and this is something that we can see the more we are able to self explore the more we are able to observe the reality we can see that generosity is going up isn't it now we are able to share our time share our physical effort share our physical assets for the development of society so generosity is growing the bravery is growing bravery is not to uh, basically harm somebody bravery is to have this commitment to develop the other this is bravery whatever be the situation my commitment is always to develop the right understanding in the other and not to hurt the other not to oppose the other isn't it this is bravery so what would be our role in sustaining the harmony in the nature this is something that we can observe so one important aspect would be to participate in value education and awareness for the masses so we can ensure formal education this is something that we are working for and we can also spread awareness among the masses as a people's education program so we can talk to various people in the society in various fields of life and we can create a general awareness that yes fulfill, we need to fulfill the nature we need to be living in harmony with the nature nature is not our slave in fact we are dependent on nature for survival isn't it so this is something that we can i hope i am audible properly there is no uh, disturbance in my sound i hope Ji, i am bhaiya. loud yeah yeah loud and clear bhaiya okay then we need to ensure value based living free of obsession for consumption profit sensual pleasure accumulation domination exploitation war all these things and for that we have to ensure the right understanding so at a personal level we can see how we are getting free of this kind of obsession okay are we obsessed with still accumulation are we still dominating exploiting uh, the nature or uh, other people in the society are we entering into wars i can see the war between ukraine and russia how it has devastated the nature in that particular area if you observe the video how buildings are being destroyed how the trees have simply got burnt out because of so much of bombarding of shells isn't it then at a personal level we can do walking as much as possible in place of using car for short distances we can walk it is also being said that one has to walk for at least 10000 steps in a single day so we can promote walking we can use cycling if i have to go to nearby places you know Uh, in fact this has to be promoted a little more in our country there are some countries in which so much of practicing of cycling is there we can plant more and more trees we can go for reforestation in the areas where we have deforested and we can develop new forests also in terms of afforestation we can protect areas such as national parks and wildlife reserves to conserve ecosystems and protect the biodiversity so national parks are being built up you know and we have wildlife reserves also then water harvesting has to be done we can see whether our colony is having water harvesting or not whether our colleges are having water harvesting or not in fact in nat there are points for water harvesting making tanks and bunds you know making uh, keeping water reservoirs so we can see this that the rain water is not wasted away then we can restore the wetlands 
this is also an important task uh, there are many efforts going on in the society to restore the wetlands we have to preserve the rivers the rivers are turning to rivulets and the rivulets are turning into barren land after some time isn't it we have to go for sustainable agricultural practices by uh, observing uh, organic and natural farming practices a good thing to share is that the sikkim state is not, has not become completely organic in fact the government has made it mandatory that no insecticide pesticide urea is going to be utilized in farming and they have made the whole agricultural practice as sustainable then we can nurture species of birds and animals at a personal level also we can do we can observe how many varieties of birds and animals are there in our neighborhood and are they coming regularly we can see that birds like flamingo and all used to come uh, from long distances from the arctic air zone and some you know such areas but they're not to be seen today so are we really aware about this we can stop poaching of animals the government has made it illegal there are severe punishments also given to people who go for poaching but still that is continuing then we have to reduce recycle reuse we have been using so much of resources we need to cut down into recycle and we can reuse also in place of having the policy of use and throw we can reuse material and we can also go for renewable material and energy if i have to make house can i use some renewable material if i have to uh, use some appliances in the house some furniture in the house can i go for renewable material is something to be observed and you can see that in the society today there are so many people who are working to preserve the nature but we need to take a serious look at this explore at a personal level in place of just blaming the government and the society around we can observe our role we can decide our role so i have seen that there are many examples of people around like i could find examples of a person in delhi who has been making nests for lakhs of birds he has been going to schools societies organizations and promoting to make nests this is some the activity that can be taken up in our colleges also when we have the environment day when we have the earth day we can make nests for birds there are so many people in the society planting thousands of trees there are some people who have planted trees in hundreds of acres of land then there are examples where people have restored rivulets by cleaning the polluted uh, polluting elements there they have restored the rivulets also made good embankments there so that the river continues the rivulet is also helping uh, cultivation there in punjab we could see one example then a person restoring the water table in thousands of acres of land this is also we could observe there are so many examples if you google you will get so many examples of such people doing such activities you can also see that in the scandinavian countries like uh, netherland iceland they have been promoting cycling uh, and it has become a common practice in society people who use uh, uh, cars and all things for short distances are being looked upon why they are polluting the nature for the sake of so uh, transportation for such short distances so they made it a way of life then there are watershed programs river restoration programs and other preservation efforts being made by the government say for the wildlife and in our country also the governments have been working heavily for this in some areas quite sincerely for example in chatisgarh we could see that watershed program has been implemented quite effectively and so many people who were active for the watershed program also become uh, they have also become a part of the well education activities this is very good to see then there are efforts of various organizations and companies also for reforestation afforestation i just came to know i will not name any particular company but there are big uh, business houses who have been investing a lot of their profit for restoring the nature for fulfilling the society running schools running campaigns uh, offering uh, treatment for health and they also are foresting they are also planting trees they have converted barren land to uh, forest so much effort is going on we need to appreciate that on the other hand they might not be working sincerely to nurture the society that could be a possibility but through csr corporate social responsibility they have been doing this so that can also be looked into then we have to have water harvesting in the cities quite important we can uh, see that there are campaigns to stop use of one time use plastic 
the bad part is that the plastic production is not curtailed only that the use is uh, being tried upon to curtail but if you curtail the production of plastic also one time use plastic then that will also reduce the pollution and then there are efforts of making eco friendly houses we can add up this list isn't it there are so many people working sincerely and to appreciate that and we also take we can also take some motivation and inspiration from them and at a personal level we can see <clears throat> at a personal level we can see what effort can we make in our college what we can do when we are assigning projects to our students sustainability is now being discussed everywhere so can we offer courses on sustainability yeah so to sum it all up we started by discussing the role of human being sustaining harm in the nature so we can see that there are four orders in nature physical order bio order animal order and human order the first three orders are mutually fulfilling for each other they are fulfilling for human being also it is naturally acceptable to human being to be fulfilling for all the orders but the human being due to lack of right understanding exploiting the other three orders and suffering because of that so only that we need to do is that to we have to understand the mutual fulfillment the inherent harmony in the nature which is not to be created just understood and we have to align by that and then we have to live accordingly isn't it this is all that we have to do we can also see that there is every provision in the nature to live accordingly and there are several ways in which we can fulfill the nature some efforts are also on and we have to enhance the efforts to sustain harmony in the nature so we can see at a personal level at the level of institution what we can do isn't it this is also an important activity and when we discuss the courses on ethics like uh, if you look at ehb2 the final module is ethics so there we can ask the students to work on such projects also in our regular courses also we can ask them to work on such projects so it is time also uh, thank you all for listening